Fast approaching half past ten means it's time to flick through the morning's papers. And as always, I have a guest in the studio to help me do that. And welcoming to the show, the CEO of She Moves, Deviani Dial. Thank you for coming in this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning indeed. How are you? I'm doing very well. I got parking easily today. <laughs> this is good news. This It's the little things, isn't it? Yeah, well, it actually, is. parking in Media City is a major thing. <laughs> so it's always great when you get the car safely parked and on the way. Except then you have to deal with the lifts coming up to the 25th <laughs> floor, which is always a bit of a struggle as well. So, you're uh, born and brought up in Dubai? Uh, born in India, but raised here after, I guess, five years old. So okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so spent uh, your childhood, your school years here and uh, your education, your further education here? Uh, no, actually, uh, I went to school here. Then I went to university in Toronto. Um, I did my bachelor's and my master's in Canada. And then I lived in Vienna in Austria for a short while. And then I moved back. Very nice. Vienna is yeah. beautiful. It was amazing. I was in a perpetually sort of in a good mood because it was just so beautiful. You know? I think it's something like uh, the biggest amount of green space, parkland uh, it, in the world in terms of capital city uh, compared to the amount of built up. Yeah, I, I mean, I would I would I would agree. I mean, there's there's a lot of greenery. The buildings are very artistic. It's just like I would say mundane in its beauty. Everything is gorgeous. Mm. So it was just, it was wonderful. It was a really good time. So you're the founder of She Moves, the CEO I, of She Moves, which is an active wear store. Well, you've got a new store that uh, just opened recently. Uh, you've been online for a couple of years now, actually, th yeah, three years now. Yes. And um, explain what She Moves actually sells. Okay. Uh, we have two categories. We sell dancewear and we sell activewear. And I would say the breakdown is like 20% dancewear and the rest is activewear. Um, I guess dancewear would be tight things like tights, leotards, leg warmers, things like that for ballet, jazz, contemporary, modern, etc. And activewear is much more broad spectrum. It is, I would say, fashionable clothing using fitness materials or sportswear materials so it's a merger between sportswear and fashion wear that's how i would put it together okay so how did you or when did you start developing an interest in this kind of product okay well, i think it was really fate led more than anything else um uh, all my life i've grown up uh, being a dancer uh really focused on ballet. When I went to Toronto, I actually did a dance degree that specialized in uh, African contemporary dance. So I would say the interest has been there since I was a child. When I moved back to Dubai, I worked with a retail organization here and really started to enjoy the retail flavor. Plus, my father has had a retail background, so it's kind mm. of been in the family. Um, so around 2010 is when the bed, like the bug started biting, which is like, start your own business, start your own business. Mm -hmm. And so we did, um, a sort of research on what we should do. We conducted a research of 400 women in Dubai mall and mall of Emirates around the sports areas and asked the women various questions about what they felt companies offered fitness wise and that's based on that it kind of just validated what our intuition was at least what my intuition was already saying which was that women are underserved in the fitness world in this region and that's really how she moves came about do you think that having uh, your dad working in the retail environment already helped you in terms of planning in terms of doing the research in terms of putting together a business plan Yes, I think so. I mean, he was instrumental in trying. I mean, we wouldn't really be here <laughs> if dad wasn't around. And I would say the same for mom because dad and I fight. So that's when she kind of steps in and says, time out, time out, <laughs> you know. Yeah. OK, we'll talk more about uh, how you then ended up being online in 2011 and also how you won a radio competition not very long after that, after we take a look at some of the headlines 
from this morning's papers then and Seven Days Front Page focuses on Emirati Muna Harib who formed an aid organisation last year following a solo visit to the Zatari camp in Jordan. Now that's a place that is home to thousands of Syrians, I think it's now into the hundreds of thousands of Syrians who fled conflict in their country. Harib told Seven Days, imagine yourself with a six-year-old and he's so sad with scars on his face after getting him help. He's doing better now. I've grown very attached to these people and Jamal looks at me like a motherly figure but he still misses his mother. Harib, a marketing and communications professional, said she founded Breathing Numbers in May 2013 when she returned from her visit to Jordan. I don't know how anyone can witness something like that and go back to how they were. I had to do something, she said. Breathing Numbers' next bid fundraising push will be next week when it holds an auction dinner on Thursday. Golf News writes, if you're a Canadian with dual citizenship and outside Canada, Ottawa bureaucrats consider you a citizen of convenience. And they plan to curb your rights to government services and benefits, making you pay more in taxes and prevent you from having a Canadian driving license or having an active bank account there. But the stricter rules would also apply to Canadians and take effect after five years living away from Canada. Officials believe there are 2.8 million Canadians living around the world and it's estimated there are currently 40,000 Canadians living in the UAE, though many more are likely to have Canadian passports as dual citizenship. Now, you picked out from the National this morning, Davayeni, the uh, article that the Dubai tram system looks like it's ready to start testing. Yes, absolutely does. It's supposed to be testing in about uh, a week. January 26th is when the testing begins. Uh, but it's not going to be open to the public no. just yet. Uh, this is actually, the testing is going to be done on the uh, level area of track that I can actually see from this window. Right. Uh, it's the right. one that goes down Al Sufa Road, looking at the two tram stations that are pretty much almost complete by the looks of it. Uh, right. Of course, we had um, the... Uh, founder of Road Safety UAE on the show yesterday and we were talking about how an integrated uh, public transport system will in the end start going through to the traffic uh, on the roads the the losing yeah i mean basically reducing the traffic uh, thus creating a more safe environment in terms of road safety and having an integrated system bringing the tram online will only hope uh, aid that as well won't it right I guess their decision to have the first tram on Al Sufu Road, which is mm, doesn't really have any restaurants, is not really that populated, is a good testing ground. You can make some really nice mistakes on it and, f- <laughs> and figure not it out. Not horrific mistakes, hopefully. <laughs> don't want any sort of disasters happening when I'm on the radio and looking down at the tram system. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, it, it will end up linking a lot of uh, heavily populated areas, uh, JLT, the marina. JBR will all link up on the tram system, which will then link up to the metro and hopefully ease some of these traffic hotspots in and around New Dubai. Right. 20 to 11, chatting to Devayani Dayal, the CEO of She Moves, which you set up in 2011. What made you decide initially to go online? Uh, money. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it was really like... You know, you just say, hey, I want to start my own business. Let's look at my bank account. Oh, I have only this much money. Hmm, what's the cheapest thing to do to start the business? Online. That was that was literally how it went. But, of course, going online uh, does have many pitfalls, doesn't it? It's, you really have to market. You really know how you can uh, optimize your search engine uh, capabilities, etc., etc. So... Uh, did you have help in in doing that? Did you have uh, yeah. web designers that came in, um, web marketers that helped you all do that kind of thing? Well, I think I have become a social media champion <laughs> because of this entire process. But yes, we had a company called Businessware that helped us create our website. Um, and uh, from what I understand or from the feedback I've gotten from everybody, everybody says that the website works really well. There's no glitches. There's no issues. It presents the information well, which apparently in this region is not something you can Mm. take for granted. So I'm quite proud about that. And um, in terms of the optimization, etc., this is the main reason we switched or moved from online to offline as well, because 
you know, with clothing, you need to touch and feel the product. It's not like a phone. You don't know. You can't just look at it and say, how many millimeters is it? Mm. How much does it weigh? The specs are the same all over the world. You need to try it on. You need to feel the fabric. You need to see how it smells. So online sales, although it was great for reach and all of that, it wasn't so great for um, selling. It, distribution is really where we sort of realized, hey, we kind of have a winner here. But with the online portal that you started in 2011, it obviously did very well because you actually won a radio competition in 2012. Yuppers. Uh <laughs> Now, how did that come about? What What was the process behind that? Um, we had to send in a written application just sort of explaining who we are, what do we do, what is our goal, etc. The entry requirement was you had to have an established trade license and be younger than three years old, which we fit. And I believe there were a hundred people that qualified, and there were four rounds that were live on air with questions and answers about the business, about case studies, about general knowledge, etc. And we won. <laughs> so, congratulations! Thank Very you. well done. Thank you. So, when you're sourcing your products <laughs> that you're selling, yes. Uh, I, I note here, I don't know any of these brands, but uh, I note it says they're leading international brands that you stock. So right. how do you go about uh, getting that leading international brand mm. to uh, sell on your website? Um, this has been, I would say, one of the biggest challenges because when you are uh, somewhat of a trailblazer and you're kind of starting a new category in a market, you really have to educate people about the category. So uh, I'll give you a small example. We launched in the shop, which uh, basically accessories. So we have things called yoga blocks, Pilates rings, and uh, yoga straps. So when you look at it, you just most people would just gloss by that area. They would say, yeah, some funny equipment and just walk by. So we started launching these talkers throughout the store. Almost every product has a little A4 or a half A4 or a little sign that tells you about the product in sort of casual layman's terms without really getting technical at all. And as soon as we did that, the sales for those items started to increase. So I think education is probably one of the biggest aspects of active wear, active wear accessories and, and, and so on. So the yes, they are leading international brands because in the world of active wear, in mature markets such as the US and Canada and the UK, they're very well known and are you know synonymous with quality. But in this part of the world where nobody even knows what active wear is, um, there's going to be a little bit of time before that bridge, that gap is bridged, I would say. Taking a look at the headlines from the papers and donor countries meeting in Kuwait yesterday promised a more than 2.4 billion US dollars, including a UAE pledge of another $60 million in humanitarian aid for victims of the Syrian war, reports The National. About 70 countries and 24 organizations attended the conference, which was hoped to raise an unprecedented $6.5 billion. That works out as 238.7 billion dirhams to help those affected by the almost three-year civil war. At the opening of the conference, the Kuwaiti Emir, Sheikh Sabah al-Ahmed al-Sabah, pledged $500 million. The US added $380 million, bringing its humanitarian contribution to $1.7 billion since the war began. And the national rights Abu Dhabi will treat and reuse all of its wastewater to irrigate farms and parks within four years in an ambitious environmental plan. As it stands, 60% of the 284 million cubic meters of treated sewage generated in the emirate each year is reused, said Dr. Mohamed Dawood, water resources manager at the environment agency Abu Dhabi. The remaining 40% is discharged into the sea, affecting the environment and wasting a precious resort. resource, he said. Now Abu Dhabi is targeting to reach 100% utilization for all treated waste water in the future by 2017 or 2018 maximum. We will come to the story that you've picked out next after Chukogu Chionon Kumoriuta from Yamada.
Chikoku Chio Non Kumrio Ta, which translates as, I think, uh, the lullaby of Chikoku. Maybe. Uh, right. <laughs> Diviani Dial, the CEO of She Moves, you're in with me to talk about the papers. And I know you're very excited about the story <laughs> that you picked out. Uh, yesterday, you may have heard us talking to uh, the Tina Turner lookalikey and the Freddie Mercury lookalikey, as we are the champions takes to the stage at the Madinat Theatre. Did they really look like them? Not in their day to day wear. That would okay. have been a bit weird. <laughs> uh, but yeah, very nice people. Looking okay. forward to We Are the Champions at the Madinat Theatre this weekend. And you are very much looking forward to an announcement about a band from oh, 80s, 90s? When were when were they? 90s. 90s. 90s, yeah. Shall I sing it? Back you go on. Backstreet's back. All right. <laughs> yeah, okay. so the Backstreet Boys are back. Um, set to perform on... March 28th at Dubai World Trade Center. Now, why are you so excited about this? Well, <laughs> I think it's because it's a, you know, a childhood group. When we were young, we all had crushes on one of the Backstreet Boys. Right. And that's, uh, but I guess I'll launch into my funny story now. Um, <laughs> in our school, we had these food days where um, everybody would prepare food from home and bring the food to school and then we'd sell the food. And um, I don't know why I never just I never I never asked my mom and dad for money for the f- I, I guess I would always just tend to forget because it's not something you think about until you see the food and think, oh, I want to eat that. So in an effort to be enterprising, I used to buy just 17 magazine in which they would always have the center spread would be sort of a poster it would be a two page or a four page or an eight page or whatever. And at the time, Backstreet Boys earned me a lot of money because I used to sell those posters. <laughs> so my going rate was per page, it was five dirhams. So if you got a two page, it was 10 dirhams. If you got a four page, it was 20. And, you know, it was, it was great. I made some money that way. <laughs> it's nice for a 12 year old. OK, when you said you had a funny story about the Backstreet Boys, <laughs> I did not expect it to be anything like that. But it shows that you had entrepreneurial spirit from a very young age. Yeah, yeah. And of course, um, there was a big debate. Everybody liked the, what's his name? Kevin Richardson. He's the baritone. I just liked the way he would speak. And um, the other girls liked the boyish Nick Carter. So, yeah, I was a Kevin girl. <laughs> okay. Interesting enough, the Support Act is All Saints. Yes. Who were pretty huge in the late 90s as well, weren't they? They were. They were. Uh, what was the song? That, there was the, Black the song Coffee. The... There was Pure Shores. Right. That's the one. And uh, some others. And the Appleton sisters were part of All Saints. I yeah. can't imagine they're going to be but don't performing they make as the part All of All Saints. Saints. Aren't they all saints are nothing without them? Well, this is wonder why they're the support act rather than co-headliners. Yeah, that the makes main me act. Consider that that's why there is an issue there. So going back to she moves. Yes. Mm-hmm. After the Backstreet Boys chat, <laughs> uh, your store is where? Store is in uh, City Walk Mall on Al Safa Road in Jumeirah, where the old jail used to be. <laughs> okay. Which it's not there anymore, so don't be scared. <laughs> but yeah. And so you you set up. Only a couple of months ago now, really. Yeah, uh, October 6th is the day we opened, so it's just been October November, three months. Yeah. Okay, yeah. how's it going so far? It's going very well. Uh, we're, I think there's imp- slow improvement, but as long as there's consistent improvement, that makes my heart feel good. And DSF has been pretty good for us. We've been getting a lot of traffic from outside of the UAE, I would say, which is nice. Of course, that whole area is quite a new development as well, isn't it, anyway? Yes. So yes. it's just creating that footfall. Is the whole area is, is yeah. having to experience that as well. City Walk, the mall itself is just phase one. There's phase two, three, four, etc., where there's going to be residential offices, more restaurants, more retail, etc. So that whole area is going to change. Uh, at the moment, I would say the mall really attracts locals and GCCs the most um, because of the, I guess, surrounding area and, and such. So, I mean, I think that's wonderful. Uh, but I, for my business to be sustainable, I need all types of people. 
you know. Mm. So that's really where um, where uh, we are focusing our marketing efforts a little bit more on trying to get different types of people into the store as well. Okay, so how can people find out more information about what you sell and what products you have on offer? Um, well, they can definitely visit our website, which is shemovesonline.com. And if they Googled, I guess, She Moves Online, they'll find that we have a YouTube, a Facebook, a Twitter, an Instagram, a Tumblr. So um, all of our promotions and offers are, are really sort of uh, in, in all of those areas. And uh, I guess at the moment we have a pretty cool offer. If, if you spend 250 dirhams, you get a bag worth 130 for free. Yeah. Fantastic. Deviani Dayal, CEO of She Moves, thank you so much for coming in this morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me.